live from Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. This is your motivational, sensational, inspirational, educational, keenly awaited, highly anticipated edition of the trading floor with your humble hosts, Brad Reed and Jeremy Alexander Newsom with another daily dose of mentally delicious brain food reminding you to love life, live life, and trade it. How's it going, my friends from around the world? Oh, I miss you. I miss you guys. It's been 10 minutes since we've talked. <laughs> Had some CCR. Oh, that was such a good song. I'll probably play that after we're done. I put a spell on you. Barrel. Do 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 do. Spell on you. It's such a solid. Ah, oh, so good. Who look? Type in a one if you're a big Credence Clearwater Revival fan. Mm. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a one. I'm a one on that list. What we're doing today in the third hour, ladies and gentlemen, is we are uh, experiencing Mentorship Monday. This is the third hour. You will be getting all three hours of the recorded sessions from today. And today what we're going to talk about, we're going to go over the general market, uh, what's going on, are there any trades out there. I'll run through if you, if you guys want to look at anything. Um, I will update what we're looking at on Tuesday and the third hour, which is a Tech Giant Tuesday. And I will also go over, uh, as every Mentorship Monday in the third hour, we talk about a strategy, something new, something kind of cool, exciting, or just kind of a rehashing or something older. Um we're, today we're going to talk a little bit about debit spreads and credit spreads and kind of the difference between the two and which ones you prefer to do and why. So, uh, let's go look at the market. DIA, giant bullish, can, a giant bullish candle, what a shock. Not really. Um, ladies and gentlemen, what do you guys think? Is this, uh, let me see, um, look here, I'm trying to read where I mentioned it. Uh, Mark will be neutral and grind sideways. What do you guys think? Is that neutral and grinding sideways? That is neutral and grinding sideways. Yes, that's what that is. Um, spreads and non-directionals might be best. So let's go look at the DIA. And I think if we could get some premium for this, uh, there is a very, very large chance I'll be doing this uh, spread. Uh, the DIA... And I want to look and see if I can get any money on a bull put spread uh, down here, like a 169, 168 for like April or May, like a long term bull put spread. So we'll see. Um, we'll find out. <laughs> Richard said that there's a few other teams predicting a bearish plunge. Mm hmm. Yes. Uh, um, April, let's see, April uh, 24, 2015. We'll see what's going on um, over here. By the way, just here's my two cents. This is exactly what you get going over Easter weekend, worrying about the futures. Type in a seven if you read something or mentioned something or heard something about the futures being down massively Friday, Saturday from the jobs report. Yeah. Oh my gosh. My inbox was flooded. My Facebook was flooded. Twitter was flooded. Futures are down huge. We're going to zero. I was like, why do you look at futures when the de when the market's close on a Friday? Unless you're trading them Easter weekend, you should be chilling. Don't don't worry about futures until like 7 a.m. Monday morning unless you're trading them. I mean, seriously. It doesn't matter what the futures do until it opens. Richard says, for the last 20 days, one guy has been predicting there's been a major bearish plunge in the next 27 days. So we got seven days left. Is that what you're telling me, Richard? Seven days left for a big bearish plunge? I said, yeah. All right. Um, that's interesting. How to come up with 27 days? Well, I am going to look at a spread. Here is my thoughts. Um, I do think we're going to have one more wave up. You're going to come into this little high. We're going to retrace a little bit. H how far does that retracement go? Uh, I will be shocked if we break 175. Maybe make it to 173. Maybe. I, I think I might be willing to wager. You know what? One week. Richard, can you tell me how low they, they said it would go? I would like to wager. And then So we got seven days. One week from today. Do you have an idea? Like, in, in 27 days, we have to go oh, several hundred points. Oh, gosh, no. Um, all right, I'm going to make a small wager. Here we go. I think I can. Re I think we can redo this. All right, analysis uh, 4, 6, 15. Newsom says 
99% chance the DIA will be above 170 by 4, 13, 15. Um, he also says 98.4% chance uh, the DAA will break uh, will be above 175 by next Monday. Let's just see if that works. Let's just find out. <laughs> um, Richard said this is a bear fear monger I get emails from. Yeah, I, I hear you, man. Uh, I get those too. So if you uh, if you did have any bullish positions back in here, wherever we entered, and depending on how long your protective put is, and de I guess depending on how long your um, your call option or shares or whatever you might be in are, uh, you absolutely are protected. So you bought in a protective put, uh, you did a put sale. Both of those probably, I'm assuming, um, expired April 1st or maybe got some time. If you guys fill me in, let me know. Um, I'm, I'm happy to update it for you, but I think we're going to get those off for the moment and just simply say, if we're still in a long position, uh, probably would do a covered call up here and have a trigger right there for another protective put. If you are in long-term calls or potentially shares, that's the case. Uh, 183 covered call and a trigger for a protective put. Uh, Cause again, I, I don't think we're gonna massively get below this. But anyway, let's just see if there's any premium. And I don't think there is. And if there's no premium out there, then we're gonna know for sh high probability chance that there's nothing gonna crazy happen. Nothing crazy gonna happen. Um, 169, 167.50. So we need 25 cents to make this worth it. Uh, we would sell for 24 cents. We would buy for 18 cents. Nope, there's not any premium there at all. So we might have to go all the way out till May. This might be interesting. A May 168, 167 is what I'm looking for. A long-term spread. Very, very rarely do I do these. Richard says, I've been waiting nearly that long for my DIA to break my line of 176.20. Yeah, it's 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 strong right now. 168, 167. So we could sell for 80 cents, no problem. We could buy for 70 cents. Uh, will be a little bit of a stretch, but I think a 10 cent limit does 10% ROI for a month and a half down this low. What do you guys think? Do you like it? Yes or no? Type in a one if you do, type in a two if you don't. I like it. I think it's pretty safe for a 10% ROI for a month and a half. Hmm. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm liking it. So I think I'm at least put it down there if, if you guys are interested. Um, you know, for my more conservative, longer sellers out there, 168, 167, May bull put spread, uh, 10 cent limit. Uh, I will not even look at spread unless DIA closes below the 200 SMA. Analysis on two, sorry, four, six, 15. I put a spell on you. So Ray likes it. I like it. Let's see what happens. Uh, <clears throat> I actually have no issue with the market doing this, by the way. I don't think it does. But if it did, I would be a buyer for sure down here. Why not? Bounce, bounce, bounce. I do think we get one more rotation. Boop, 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 boop. Maybe we come down to there. I don't think it happens in this week. But if we did, I'm, I'm a buyer down there. This is a very strong support very strong down this little level. So I guess we're going to kind of keep an eye on it. That's my thoughts, guys. Bullish to neutral. Uh, there's a lot of people out there mentioning that the market is going to free fall. I'm going to read what Pat says. Pat says, um, note from last night, expecting sell-off, expecting a 5% correction sometime in the next six months. Mediocre economic data contributing to bearish sentiment. Historically speaking, Monday after Easter, 75% bearish. No higher highs since end of February. Okay, there we go. <laughs> cool. 5% correction. Um, I think that'd be fine if that happened. I think that'd be great. I don't think there's any issue at all in there. We'll see, boys and girls. We'll see. There, there's The volume is not scaring me right now. For, for the Even for the bearish volume, right? On these days, as I did, as I mentioned, I was like, man, 
If we break the FOMC candle, there's going to be a lot of things changing. There's going to be a lot of volatility. There's going to be a lot of ups and downs. But the bearish volume is not here. Here's what I can go ahead and tell you to expect. Or, I'm sorry, to keep an eye out for. Random bearish volume spikes. Because <clears throat> a 5% correction is nothing. If we correct 5%, that's great. <clears throat> um, I, I'm a buyer at a 5% correction. Same thing with the SPY, right? If you did get triggered in bullish back here and you've been protecting your position with protective puts and you've been doing your you know, your put sales offsetting the cost of those puts, I think you're doing fine. Again, depending on how long-term your call options or stock options or whatever you're trading are, we do have higher lows in here. We do have lower highs. I still think we get something like this. I still think we break out bullish. I still think we have a higher high coming market-wise 2015. That's just my thought. Um... Something that I'm going to be watching for is, and I will go ahead and tell you guys this, if I see the SPY make it up to, let's just say, 220 um, in July, okay? And then the market doesn't really do very much, but one day we get just a giant bearish volume spike other than option expiration Friday. That is when you know something's up. You guys feeling me? Type in a three if you understand what I'm saying. Other than op option expiration day, if we get up at an all-time high and we just see this random, some volume spikes start to coming in, that's when I'm going to get concerned. Because some people are going to want to sell up there. But right now, we're getting bullish volume spikes, not bearish volume spikes, and that's why I'm so bullish on the market. Uh, SPY... I like what you're saying there, uh, Richard. He said, this is forming a perfect three-month continuation pattern. So let me come in here. Um, you talking about like that, Richard? Is this what you're, is this what you're describing? It's like, type of, he said, yep. Wow, that's a really good eye, man. I'm, I'm fully on board with you on that. Fully on board. I was bullish here. We had to protect some, mitigate some. If you're still in, shares or whatever. This... I'm in, I'm in again. I'm in like Flynn. Especially if it happens in April. You guys know February, April, March. Those are usually my favorite months. March has ended up not being a good month. So February was. I'm hoping April, maybe the tail end of April will be. So we shall see, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see what happens. Um, that did okay. Let's, that was a long time ago. Uh, I don't really have anything on the SPY. I mean, if we did a spread on the SPY, it'd probably be a 197, 196. Uh, the QQQs, now the Qs is really interesting because I know for certain that people went bearish on the Qs. Type in an eight if you know people for certain went bearish on the Qs. <laughs> Man, I know for a fact there are people who loaded up because they're like, double top! I was like, that is a double top. I had to agree with them. I was like, it is, but we got to close all that neckline. It's like, unless we close all that neckline, didn't close, didn't close, giant bullish candle. I'm more bullish than bearish is what I'm saying. So same thing with the Qs, right? If you got in bullish back here, stock trade up, you're in some protective puts. These are a good thing. I mean, puts are offsetting your cost. You're not losing a lot or much at all on the Qs if you're doing these, uh, these adjusting strategies. Um... If you got triggered in bullish intraday off this morning star reversal, I'm cool with that. Uh, if you didn't, let's see if we can find a place to get triggered in. Uh, here's the hourly, phenomenally bullish candle on the hourly. Uh, if you want to wait for a move higher above this pivot or close above there, I can get behind that. End of day trigger. I'm totally fine. Now, in my little bullish, pr I, I don't know what the word is. It's a P word. Prophet, no, I don't even know what it is. Proclamation, that might be it. I realize that I'm bullish. I realize I'm one of the few out there. And so maybe I'm just seeing something wrong. One candle is going to change everything if it happens. If we gap down and we open here tomorrow, that's the only time I will be bearish. If we open below one of these pivots. You guys got me on that? If we open and we just trap some people on the indices, specifically tomorrow, I will be bearish. 
Matter of fact, we do that tomorrow, and I'm, I'm going to go buy a few puts. Because we will go lower, if that happens tomorrow. If it happens sometime next week, right, we roll over a little bit, we kind of close, uh, I'll be a little bit more cautious because then I'm expecting like something like that to continue. But if you want to wait for a close uh, on the queues above 106.86 uh, and you want to have a, a stop or a trigger to buy some protective puts, if we do break below that little low, I can get behind that as well. If you want to wait for a little bit of a pullback, uh, I can get behind you know something like like this tomorrow in a continuation. Anyway, I'm bullish and uh, I'm interested to see what can you know kind of plays out. The IWM, uh, we still have not broken this high, right there. If and when we do break that high, we do something like this and we break it, the market will likely follow. It'll probably continue up a little bit. IWM, we got bullish in here. Trigger the protective put right there. Continued higher retrace. We're trying to do our best to continue a little bit higher up. So at the moment on the IWM, um, I don't have a really great trigger. I'm going to wait just a little bit to see how we interact with this high, this 125 high. I think we're going to pull down a little bit tomorrow. I do think we have a small black candle tomorrow on the indices, a small black candle, and then um, see if it continues higher. That's my thoughts on the general market, ladies and gentlemen. So to kind of just coincide a little bit, with credit spreads and debit spreads, I think there are two different times to enter those particular trades. Since we did a credit spread on the DIA, let's talk about the DIA specifically. So when I'm doing a credit spread, let's see if I write this out. When I am doing a credit, well, I don't know why I put great. <laughs> when I am doing a credit spread, in my head I said great credit spread. When I'm doing a credit spread, I want the primary, primary and intermediate trends to be bullish to sideways. Or bearish to sideways if I'm doing a bear call spread. Or bearish to sideways. So I want the primary and intermediate trend to be kind of doing the same thing. So the first, the la last year, the last few months, kind of doing the same thing. And I want to see some slight edge on the daily or hourly. Some slight edge on the daily or hourly. Then I enter a credit spread bringing money in so if you do this particular credit spread let's say for example the 168 167 may for 10 cents 10 percent roi if i do that particular spread and i have a margin account i can do a thousand dollars margin on 10 cents that will bring in a hundred dollars minus commission so i'll be bringing money in So I want a credit spread. I want the trade to be mildly directional or neutral. Like that. That's mildly directional. It is making higher highs and higher lows, but just slowly. So on the DIA and the SPY, we've been doing well with spreads. Let's just kind of keep that in mind. The only thing we've gotten hosed on really was FAS, and there was just nothing I could do about that. I told you guys it was going to happen. <laughs> you're gonna those are gonna happen but on this on the indices in general we've been doing okay on them so that's when i do credit spreads when i can i kind of see a general idea of what's going on i'll copy and paste that again if you're watching the recording of this just pause it to, you know write it down whatever that might be now this is where me and the vast majority of traders well, I should say instructors argue. And the argue is very light argument. Debit spreads. I only enter a debit spread when I have a lot of sentiment showing me the trade will rest 
pause. And for all intensive purposes, slow down. That is the only time I do debit spreads. Because when I'm in a debit spread, I'm going to go ahead and write this down as well. When I enter a debit spread, I am already in the directional option. So I'm trying to think of the last time I did a debit spread. I think I'm going to have to go over to Apple. So let me copy and paste this for you guys in the live room and those watching the recording. Feel free to pause and write that down if you would like to. Um, Gaston said, can you add buy to open and sell to open? I can. So sell to open the 168, buy to open 167. Pat says, intents and purposes, not intensive purposes. Oh, really? <laughs> Is that the phrase? <laughs> oh, man. I had I just learned something again. Jeez, I wonder how long I've said that. Intents and purposes. Wow. Well, thank you, Pat. <laughs> I have never known that, ever. I always thought it was for all intensive purposes. <laughs> oh, that is funny. That is funny. All right, well, there we go. So let me uh, hop over to the last time I did a debit spread. This is on Apple. Last time I did a debit spread. So on Apple, I got in bullish, as you guys know, on the 17th of March. So um, I'm going to have to write most of this out. <clears throat> I'm just going to do my best to remember here. Bought to open 125 May calls on that day. So Gaston, I know, I know I'm working mostly for you, uh, but give me a one if you uh, if you follow me so far. Cheryl said, you'll never get it wrong again, Jan. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> but yeah, I learned something for all intents and purposes. Okay. All right, so Gaston's following me. Cool. So on that day, I, I bought it. Why did I do that? Well, I thought it was a retest gap. You know, I, I want to kind of, a little bounce off the 50. I was like, all right, good. This looks bullish. So I got him bullish. That was my plan to do so. So when the stock approached this resistance, I said to myself, hmm, that is a resistance. I do have a retest gap. It could slow down here. So for all intents and purposes, I said to myself, I think Apple is going to pause here. So what did I do? I sold to open. Um, I'm I believe it was the March week two one thirty call. That's what I did. <clears throat> so Gaston, uh, ironically enough, it's actually not naked. Because what you're doing right now is you are legging into a debit spread. You're legging into a debit spread. So it's not a naked call. Because you own the underlying 125 call. So how much money can you make on this trade? $5. That's the absolute maximum amount you can make is $5. The difference between 125 and 130. So it is very similar to a covered call, but not exactly because you're using options. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that means that if Apple were to do this 
And on March week two, if it was going to expire above 130, Gaston, I would have to, and I do mean have to, I would have to buy to close that 130 call because I do not own the shares and my call expires in May. So since I have a different expiration on Apple in that example, I would have sold the shares short at 130 if my call expired in the money. That is the difference between a covered call and a debit spread on options. So let's say as another example, I have a trader and there's a few of these, Tina, Jay, uh, a few other ladies out there, um, Kenneth, and I think two or three more who have, let's, let's say June or July call options. They want to be in Apple for a while. They're bullish. It makes sense to me. So they're saying, I'm going to be in bullish for a while. So I'm not really that afraid of, you know, small pullbacks. So what could they have done? Well, let's say, uh, again, they bought a 125 July call option on this day. They could have sold the 130 April week one. And in doing so, you bring in a little bit of premium. So the 125 July call would have, let's just say, cost about $9. And if you sold on March 17th, the 130 April week one call, you'd probably bring in a dollar worth of premium. So as long as Apple closes below 130 on the first week of April expiration, that dollar premium will just get credited to your account. And now your theoretical cost basis for your 125 July Apple call is $8 instead of nine. And that's really it. All you did is make a little bit of extra money while the stock trades sideways by doing the debit spread. That is the debit spread and the only debit spread that I do. Is when a stock, I think a stock is going to slow down or pause, I will get into a spread to offset my cost a little bit. It's just kind of bring in some premium just in case something goes down. It's great for traders who plan on being in a trade a long time. Now, the question always comes up, how do you know when it's going to slow down? No, you don't. You do not. So the only time I sell it is when it's at a resistance or you have a bunch of white candles in a row and you're very, very confident that it's it, it's going to slow down. And if it doesn't, the option that you're selling would make you money on the trade. For example, if I did the 125 call here and the 130 call here and the stock went up, Right? If I bought the option for $3.50 and then it was way up here, my maximum profit is $5. Did I make a profit on that trade? Yes or no? And the answer is yes. Uh, this is also called a calendar. Mm -hmm, that is correct. A calendar spread. What makes it a debit or a credit is did you make money or are you spending money on this trade? This is also called, this theoretically is called a calendar debit spread because you have different expirations. Kenneth said, so it is a covered call where the long position is in the money calls instead of owning the security. Uh, let me read that again. So it is a covered call where the long position is in the money calls instead of owning the security. Kind of. It's not a covered call, Kenneth, but it's not naked either. The only time, and I do mean the only time you can have a covered call is when you own the security and you sell the call option. The only time it's covered. If you get into a debit spread and the stock closes above the call you sold, you will short the shares unless they have the same expiration. And if they, have the, if they have the same expiration, you technically short the shares anyway, but then your broker realizes what's going on and, and unravels it for you. As an example, 
let's say you, you bought the 125 May call there and you sold the 134 May call there. And in May, Apple expires at 140. This is your maximum profit. What your broker will do at 140 as expiration hits, you will go in and you will short the stock in your account at 134. However, your broker says, well, he also has the right to own the underlying shares at 125. So since he does his shares at 125, they buy the shares and then they sell them at 134 and you realize a $9 per contract $9 per contract intrinsic value gain. And that's all you get. So the only time a debit spread is a good thing to let it expire in the money is if they are the same expiration. Both options, the May, June, July, whatever the option is, as long as they're the same time frame and they expire in the money, that's, that's okay. But if they're different time frames, you do not want that to expire in the money. Expiring out of the money is fine. In the money, no, not good. Great question, though. Oh, I'm sorry you're feeling sick, Pat. I hope you get better. Uh, anything else, um, Gaston, you might have a question about? So that's the only time I do debit spreads is if I'm in a position, I'm making money on it, and like, let's say, for example, here on Apple, I'm, I'm like, hmm, I have, I still have, you know, five months left on my option. I'm going to sell a call into strength. I'm going to buy a protective put. And theoretically, you get into an options caller. In my opinion, if you if you are in a positive equity position, you shouldn't lose on that trade. Or at least you shouldn't lose that much. If you're in a positive equity. So if you bought here and Apple's here and you have five, seven, eight months left on your option, Sell a call, buy a protective put, walk away. Because you know that you're selling into strength. Right? That's, that's my thought. Is There's a lot of people will say, oh, but it could go much higher. Well, it could, but it's sentiment, right? Apple's not going to run forever. So on that day, we talked about Apple pulling back a little bit, at least. At least into here and then bouncing. So it did pull back a little bit, just never bounced. It just kind of kept going down a little bit and then bounced. So there you guys go. Um, Ford says, does it matter if you bought those two positions at different times? Um, no, it does not matter. Stan, I'm not going to forget Google. I'm actually going to do it next for you, brother. So you can do it whenever you want. It's, you know, that, that, that does not matter. So let's say theoretically you have a call. Let's just say you have a naked call by itself. Stock's going down, stock's going down, stock's going down. And then this call is going to expire this week. But you're saying to yourself, man, this looks kind of bullish. All right, so you hop in and you buy um, a June 125 call option. Now you have a debit spread. So if the stock goes up to here, you've limited your risk. Um, and if it has, you know, you've limited your risk, you've limited your return. But if it doesn't go up there, the, the call, which was once naked, which is now a debit spread, expires worthless. You own the 125 call and all is, all is good. Uh, so let's hop over to Google. So Google was the one thing that I was really cautious about, right? Was that 100 simple moving average? You guys remember me saying that? Here's the double top. Uh, for It is confirmed double top, theoretically. It closed on the neckline. Here we are at the, the 100 simple moving average. And are we going to bounce? That's a very, very valid question. Um, Stan, if I were to do a put sale on Google since earnings is coming up in about two weeks, I would do a 5.30 weekly put sale. Because my question is on Google, if this is a double top and we're at the 100, could we do this and get down to 5.30 by this Friday? In which case I'd say probably not. Especially since Monday is almost over. So if we're coming in here, I would likely, again, since earnings are right around the corner and the, the chart pattern is not the most bullish pattern in the world, I would say 5.30, I could get 5.30 for about 75 cents, maybe even 80. That's what I would consider. Let that expire this week. 
Because here's the two things you have for a support. You have the 100, you have this pivot, and you also have this support resistance level around 543 and some change. Here's your weekly chart on Google. You can see the weekly chart, the 100 simple moving average is at 531.38. So there's also a little bit of support at 530. That'd be, my, that'd be the way I would personally play it because I'd say, well, we only have four days left. I don't think it gets below 530. And I'm not really going to consider concern myself with that put sale unless we close below 534. In which case, I'll probably just buy to close, lose a little bit of money, and that'd be the end of the day. What do you think, my man? Does that sound like a plan? <clears throat> um, as far as, since I was talking about Apple, as far as our spread on Apple... Uh, we have the 119s fine. This 133, 134 should be just fine. The 130, 131 is the only one we're really going to have to concern ourselves with, and that's expiring this week. We'll definitely keep a close eye on it. We have a lot of white cows in a row, so I'm thinking we're going to get a small pullback either tomorrow or Wednesday on Apple, so we should be okay. If we gap up tomorrow, we gap up above 129. It is a retest gap. I'm going to let it pull back a little bit, and then I likely will um, exit the bear call spread, uh, depending on the gap. I mean, if we just really just kind of clean gap above here. So on tomorrow, if we get a black candle tomorrow on Tuesday, and Wednesday we gap up at 130, I'm definitely going to unravel. Because that's a very, very strong pivot. I do not anticipate Apple taking out um, 129.16 this week. That's why I did the bear call spread where I did it. Could it trade up to there and rest a little bit? Yes, that's kind of what I think. So we're going to get close on the 130-131. I don't think we get close at all on the 133. And our bull put spreads or put sales, if anyone did them, will be just fine. We're bouncing pretty cleanly off the 50 exponential moving average, uh, really for the third time, third, second time. Uh, I do want to give a giant shout out to my boy, Ken Freeman, who was talking about buying some calls on Apple just on Thursday. What do you think, Ken? Did you get some? Did you get a chance to pick some up? Are you kind of waiting or what? Like I said, we closed above this little support resistance pivot area right there. I think that would be an okay location to pick some up. Do something like this, like this. Maybe we pull all the way back here and get another opportunity to off to 50 again. But uh, it'll, it'll be interesting to see. There's the 100, so we should be all right down there. Uh, let's talk about what stocks you guys want to look at tomorrow for Tech Giant Tuesday. Go ahead and give them to me. I know the normal ones, Tesla is going to be definitely be on there. Apple, Google. Okay, anything else? Microsoft, you got it. Microsoft, Twitter. Um, Pat says, who won the ticker symbol contest? Prasad actually won the ticker symbol contest. It was a good battle. It was a very good battle. John Compton, who's new to the trading floor, made it very, very far. He's not here right now, but he was uh, he was here earlier. He made it he made it really far. That was good times. Anything else other than those, ladies and gentlemen? Cheryl said, Well, where was it held? We just had a webinar. Steven said, When's the next ticker contest? I don't know. We'll probably do one on the trading floor at some point again, but the uh, a big one like that where I invite the world, probably do it every NCAA, March Madness, every March. Smaller ones we'll probably host at least once a month in the room, give you guys some frequent trading points, maybe some t-shirts when we get them. Um, this is all you guys want to look at, huh? Well, I'm going to look at Hewlett Packard for my boy Ford. And, uh, okay, that's what we'll look at tomorrow, guaranteed in the third hour. So if you're watching the recording, we will wa we will look at those stocks. Okay, um, so we've looked at Google, looked at Apple. Uh, Martin said, can we look at Amazon? We can look at Amazon. So here we got Amazon. Uh, a little bit of a cute white candle for sure. So we got a 385, 390 expiring, I believe it is this Friday, right? This Friday, um, the protective put, the trigger for the protective put got very, very, very close to it. So on Amazon, if we're coming in here to the hourly chart, uh, we're getting some 
some decent selling candles with some pretty good volume, kind of right at that resistance. I'm going to keep a very, very close eye on this one. Um, what I'm likely going to do, depending on the, the day that we cross 382.50, since we have a 385, is I will likely exit. If we gap up tomorrow, again, which is a very good possibility, if we gap up and we gap up tomorrow um, and we trap some people, depending on the hourly chart and how we end today, uh, I will likely unravel. I'll get into another bull put spread down here. I will unravel that spread uh, and maybe buy another short-term call, maybe like an April, May week one call. And try to ride up 390 and exit at break even since expiring this week. Uh, Wednesday, of course, we'll be taking a really close eye, a uh, close look at a few of those um, for sure. So Amazon and Netflix might get kind of close. Um, Netflix, we got a bullish, more bullish than bearish entry at about 325.16. Earnings uh, is on the 15th. So there's gonna be a lot of earnings coming up right around the corner, so keep an eye on it. But if again, if Netflix breaches this high, I could really imagine some decent day trades kind of coming in. Uh, so Martin, start getting your plans ready and start getting everything created for your for the spreads out there. Uh, Yahoo, we can update our Yahoo spread. Oh, I think I already did that actually. Um, I had a big giant iron condor on Yahoo, 46, 47, 41, 40. That expired. Dan's in his 48, 49, 42, 41. That should be okay. Um, Whole Foods. Whole Foods. Got <laughs> pennies, pennies away from the stop on the 1st of April. Pennies. So we're going to watch and see if that 100 can hold it up. So I guess we're getting a little bit of a pennant pattern. Buy the balance. That was our plan. Let's see if it works. Walmart, since technically on most Mondays we do look at merchant stocks. We'll look at some of the merchant stuff and we'll see what's going on. Um, we got the 200 simple moving average, nice little cute white candle. We got a little bit of a gap in here. So we talked about doing the 79 April put sale. Uh, there's still some premium in there if you don't mind owning shares of Walmart, but we're at the 200. I suspect we bounce a little bit and kind of trade sideways in here on, uh, on Walmart. Target, Target is trading higher trying to hit uh, the ultimate 84.71, where I think we're going to rest just a little bit. This would be, in my opinion, a good example of doing a debit spread. Because ladies and gentlemen, if you looked at the chart really quick, what do you guys think? Does it look like it could rest? Yes or no? Yep. It does. It looks like it could rest. So if I was in a long-term call or even just a recent call, let's say a May position, I would go ahead and start looking for some premium at the 85 call eight, sometime in April. Let's just do that for giggles. April week one, maybe. No, we've already passed April week one. April week two or regular April. April week two is 11 cents, which is not that horrific. And I guess April week two, 85, um, is 36 cents, which is much better. So that's probably the one I would do. Regular April, 85 call. And so your thought process is, okay, if it does this, it'll probably pull back a little bit. The call will likely expire. I still have my longer term call and I've, you know, whatever. And if it continues higher, then you're theoretically going to exit at $85 and 36 cents. If you did have a May call, right? You do an April expiration. So you have May and then you have the April. You're going to want to exit. So you would sell to close your May and then you would buy to close your April calls simultaneously to prevent you from shorting the shares. Um, all right. 
Yeah, I hope you get feeling better, Pat. Tomorrow's gonna be back to the grind. Ready to go. If you need anything, if you need anything, Pat, let me know, okay? Pneumonia is is not never fun. That's I haven't I definitely haven't had it in a while, but it is not it's super exciting. Anything gapping between now and tomorrow that you guys want to look at? Because earnings season is coming up quickly. It is right around the corner. So we're going to be getting close to some things moving and some good gaps. I hope you I hope this month is going to be super, super stoked. Uh, Marsh said, I'm a better chef than a trader, and I really want to change. Listening every day is working. Well, great, Marsh. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Prasad says, Jan, I have a question for you. Okay, winner. What? What is your question? Winner. Just crushed it, by the way. <laughs> crushed it. Uh, let's see here. Um, Brad says, you have a new magic one minute strategy from some guy at Nonco. I don't know if it's magic or not. I will be filling you guys in a little bit more as I practice it. I'll fill you in soon. It's not, I would say it's magic by any means. It's just understanding, understanding the one minute chart a little bit better. Understanding why, why you would take a one minute entry versus another entry and so on and so forth. It's good. I do like it. It makes sense. I'll fill you in, brother. Uh, all right, let's go look and see if there's anything in Earnings Whisper. Earnings Whisper. Um, earnings Whisper. Free earnings calendar. And what else is coming out? What do we got? Tomorrow, April 7th. April 8th. Look at the April 8th. April 9th. Um, what's the April 7th? So we got nothing that I know, really. Hooker Furniture. H O F T. I more or less have to look at that one now. H O F T. Wow. Volume is very, very light. Interesting that it got it's publicly traded. It's un, that's very unique. Interesting. So nothing really there. Volume is a little too light. Um, Greenbrier Companies, GBX. Oh, Prasad, did you get my uh, real life stock review from this weekend? Since you talked about you didn't get the stock reviews before. I did Panera versus Starbucks this weekend. <laughs> Marsha said, real life traders, bar and grill. You know I would be there, Marsha. Those, uh, those stock reviews are starting to get a little bit more popular. That's exciting. Um, this one is an interesting uh, location. Volume's a tad light, but it's not horrific. I mean, you're right at average 600,000 shares. Greenbrier Company. I think it would be one to keep on your watch list because if we do gap semi-nicely above that resistance, there's not ton stopping it. Here's the hourly. So the hourly, you got some black candles coming in. Um, let me come back over here to the daily chart. And on the daily chart, I would like it to gap above... I would like GBX to gap above 61.59 and below 64 for a nice bullish retest. If it opens, and Prasad, keep an eye on this one for me if you don't mind. If it opens in that range, watch the one minute. Maybe that'll be a little bit of a hint. <laughs> yeah. It opens in that range. Maybe keep an eye on the one. 
just to see what it does. Um, let's see, Sears, we looked at Sears. Let's go to MU. MU, getting some buying pressure down there. Not doing anything uh, amazing. Alcoa is going to have earnings pretty soon. I guess realistically, it depends on when or what earnings does. This is a this is a pretty chart that we drew in here. <laughs> um, earnings are on the eighth, so I guess this is technically when everything's going to happen. Um, I think I can get rid of this chart now since it's out there for the world to see. Good little Dow theory chart, especially if it gaps down. Gaps down, that'll be fun. Um, back in here, back in here, come over here, boom, 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 boom. Okay. Let's draw a weekly. Weekly. All right. So we're trading sideways. Where's a little pivot down here? Right about there. Okay. 12, 13. Go back to the daily. Here's what we got. We can go ahead and create the plan for Alcoa. I'm gonna make it blue. And this is really gonna work for the next two or three days. So if you're watching Alcoa, it's one to keep an eye on. If we, well, I'll put if Alcoa is, I'll put say opens below, can't spell. Opens below 1258 and above 1213 should have some semi bearish bearishness to it. If Alcoa opens at 12, likely could fade a bit. Um, I'm not in love with a bullish gap up unless it's above 14. All right, I will kind of leave that on the board. Um, analysis on, oh, you guys didn't help out Prasad? I did talk about him, but I didn't say he cheated. There's the, there's the analysis for Alcoa. How do I save these? Okay, I'm gonna come back to GBX. So Prasad, you, you here? I was, I was giving you a hint per your question. I was looking at GBX and this is a gapping tomorrow on earnings apparently. And I said, I would like GBX to gap above 6159 and below 64. I said, if it opens in that range, watch the one minute. And that'll be a hint for right now. That'll be a morsel for the future. Because really, I got to practice this, what I got to do. Before I start filling you guys in, I want to make and lose some money doing that strategy that I talked a little bit about. But that'll be a, that'll be a hint. <laughs> hmm, he says. And since Zane, he's not here right now, but I'm sure he'll watch the recording. He wants to ask about Nokia. He said, Nokia, 70, 768, 761. Am I crazy? He wants to look at a swing trade. 778, 61, 778. Uh, no, you're not crazy. The, the thing with Nokia, Zane, is it's a very... Uh, very gappy 24 hour type of stock. Um, it is doing something that I can agree with. What is it doing? Oh, I don't know. It's ugly. Maybe, maybe a wedge of some kind, something like this. I mean, you're buying low, selling high. I can appreciate that viewpoint. Let me come to the weekly chart. Yeah, it's in some type of consolidation pattern. Really, just because we can draw it doesn't mean it's going to hold, hold in there. But I can see some potential bullish uh, opportunities on this one. You got some really strong resistance at 806. And I think that's going to be the, the main factor holding um, Nokia back just a little bit. Good stuff, though. We'll keep an eye on it.
Anything else you guys uh, want to take a sneak peek at? I'm sorry, uh, Pat wants to look at Panera. Panera makes sense. Getting some selling pressure. Talked about that resistance. Selling pressure to resistance. Probably pull back and maybe bounce. Or pull back to this low and bounce again. But it's trading kind of sideways. Talked about a covered call for May uh, in my real life stock review for Panera versus Starbucks. Speaking of Starbucks, here's Starbucks. You know, since you guys are here, let me do a poll really quick. I'm going to do a poll. Um, edit. Yes, that's fine. Stock review product. I want to know what you guys want me to do the next one on. Because you're the ones that are loving these things. I love them. I love doing them. What type of product should I review? All right. Pizza. Burgers. Beer again. Fries. Chocolate. Something else, Newsome. Okay, finish, and let me launch the poll. Here we go. One, two, three. Bloop. All right, go ahead and fill me in. What do you guys want me to do the next one? <laughs> Whiskey. Mmm. That's definitely on the list. That is on the list, Ken. I'm going to give you guys about seven seconds to vote on that for me, if you don't mind. Right now, something else, Newsome, is taking the lead. So if you guys are going to say something else, you're going to have to email me and give me some ideas or better yet post on our YouTube channel under the video, which one we look at. Yeah. It looks like something else. Newsome um, one with 20% of the votes. Here you guys go. 20% of the votes. Something else. Newsome. All right. Well email me or better yet, go to our YouTube channel and post on the videos and tell me what you guys want me to do. Pat says, why is it always food? Uh, that's the easiest to review, I guess. If I buy another product, food's not super expensive. You know? Uh, if I buy something physical, which I, I will at some point for sure, um, it's a little bit more difficult to review a physical product than a food, I guess. Plus, I'm a, I'm a fatty. <laughs> Part two, the real answer <laughs> is, is I'm a fatty. So, you know, um, Lita, Lita says sold May week one, 82.50 put. All right, Lita. Here's the long-term moving averages on MasterCard. She's playing off the bounce off the 100. Lita Roberts, May week one, 82.50 put sale. Analysis on four. Six, fifteen. I like it, Lita. That's a good location, especially if you did get put put the stock. A two fifty is a pretty good reason to do it. <laughs> Donis is foodie, not fatty. <laughs> I appreciate the compliment. I do. Um, I'm not sure if I can agree with you fully, but. Versace is Jan. I have a Lulu and Under Armour. You know what, dude? I promise I am going in right now and I'm writing that down. Hey, man, go to the... I mean, tell tell me how I would review Lulu <laughs> and Under Armour. I'm game. Okay, I'll, I'll do whatever. Uh, I think that's funny, though. But that's going to be much more expensive than buying a bottle of soda. But that's cool. Prasad says, you know how. <laughs> Lita, I'm actually going to email you personally. Uh, and also, when I send out the recording, I talk about the cruise for the first seven minutes or so in the second hour. But I'm going to email you as well. And then I'm going to do another email uh, to everyone updating you guys um, very, very soon. So I appreciate it. Prasad, good idea. Great, great. Prasad has me buying used Lulu pants. This is going to be phenomenal. 
<laughs> we'll see. Either way, it's going to be sensational. Boys and girls, uh, I think another successful, exciting Mentorship Monday. I appreciate you all being here so much. Very, very good questions. The class was packed today. You all were here. Uh, so thank you for your support, your energy, your excitement. I'll be sending out the recordings in about three hours. Otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, traders from around the world, I'm super excited about April. Uh, we begin full steam ahead tomorrow. If you have any questions, you need anything, let me know. Um, I'll see you tomorrow. You guys rock. And until then, remember, love life, live life, and trade it.